What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an overall market update looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. And we're also gonna be talking about one trade that I made today on the 8th of January in 2018. But before we do talk about these topics, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box so today guys we had a green day in the stock market the dow jones was up 256 points and 10 cents up 1.09 percent at the close the s p 500 closed the day up nearly one percent up $25 and the NASDAQ composite closed the day up around nearly 1%, 0.85%, up around $55. And what do we notice in terms of the Dow Jones and the S&P? Both of these have broken critical resistance points on the 180-day four-hour chart. And we're going to start off talking about that in this video. So over the past couple of trading days, we've been having a lot of upwards push in the markets. This is mostly due to Trump tweeting this morning that the, the trade talks are going well. He actually issued a little bit of uh, news last week about that as well. The Fed's easing up on interest rates. That's what they said in the meeting last week. These are all positive short-term news that could be potentially putting pushing up the stock market right now. And we also talked about in, the, in yesterday's video that the Dow Jones was right at a resistance from the sell-off that we saw last year in 2018 in March and February when we sold off from $227,000 all the way down to around $23,000. $500. In yesterday's video, guys, we were right around this resistance and we clearly broke out of this resistance during today's session with again having a 1% day up $256. So the next resistance point that we have to keep an eye on now in terms of the Dow Jones is going to be right here at around $24,100. This was from a sell-off that we experienced back in June from when the Dow sold off $25,000 and $300, $25,300, all the way down to around $24,100. This is the next resistance that we have to keep an eye on for the Dow Jones, and obviously next is going to be around $24,500. So like I said in yesterday's video, guys, and the video before that, you know, we've been having a couple of green days in a row due to this short-term news, and I do expect a pullback to come, you know, one of these trading days coming up. We obviously don't know when exactly it's going to happen, but I think we're going to sell off pretty hard coming soon. And each day that we have a green day, we're pushing up more and more into overbought territory on this Dow Jones and pushing us closer to these resistance points. So again, guys, just to keep an eye on, uh, you know, keep an eye on this one right here at 24,100. And the next one's going to be at around 24,000. $500. And if we take a look at the 20 day chart, we notice that, you know, this pattern is still intact. This pattern of higher highs, higher lows, you know, we can clearly see the Dow is still on this pattern. So for us to see any downwards push right now, any downwards reversal trend um, in the Dow Jones, we would want to see a break at least below I would say around $22,600. So, you know, we're about a thousand points off right now from a break of trend. Actually, you know, this would be the second break of trend. Actually, the first break of trend. Um, you know, would be once we're starting to head below roughly $23,300, once we start to break this previous higher high and get closer to that higher low um, that we were just talking about, that's going to be getting, you know, closer and closer to that break of trend 
in the Dow Jones. So guys, keep an eye on it. We're still at the higher high portion right now. You know, wait for a pullback coming. It's coming, guys. Trust me on this. We're going to be seeing one in the next couple of days. It's just inevitable, right? We saw a pullback here. We've had a couple of green days in a row. I think we're going to see another big pullback either tomorrow, the next day. You know, one of these days coming up, we're going to see a pullback. So if we see, you know, here on the S&P 500, very similar, right? We bounced on this higher low. We pushed up, made a higher high. And now we broke this 20 SMA or rather this, uh, you know, the 180 SMA on the 20-day chart. And if we're taking a look at the longer term chart here, we broke the 50 SMA on the 180 day chart here with the next resistance being at around 26 hundred and twenty five dollars which we saw a triple bottom at a little bit earlier um this was during october and november and obviously we saw a break of that pattern you know this is when we saw that huge panic sell and once we found that bottom obviously we've had those couple of green days in a row and like i said guys you know this higher high pattern is in effect still and we are probably going to see a pullback in the next couple of days and we're either going to break this trend meaning that we're going to break this uh, 50 SMA support here because I think if we do pull back, the support is going to be on this 50 SMA. And if we break that support, right, we break that 50 SMA, um, you know, trend line, that's going to be a good sign that we're pushing down and we could be continuing, um, you know, this overall downtrend that we do see, you know, on this chart on the 184 hour chart here. And then we, and if we take a look, um, you know, at the NASDAQ, this one is still at a resistance under the 180 day SMA, although it has been on this higher high, higher low pattern over the past couple of days. This is the only one out of the three that is still under that simple moving average resistance, which has been a strong resistance over the past couple trading weeks. We can see it got rejected here, got rejected here, got rejected here. And, you know, this is the fourth time that we're testing it, so it could potentially get rejected. And, you know, just because... We've seen it get rejected there in the past. Does not mean that it's going to get rejected again. But since we've had all these green days in a row, like I've been saying, I do expect a pullback one of these days. It's going to come, uh, you know, in my personal opinion. So judging on this closer term chart here, just like the S&P guys, just like the NASDAQ, this higher high, higher low pattern is still in effect. We see the low at 58.20, next low at around 61.65. We popped up, made a high at around 65.65 uh, today, and the previous high was at around 6,400. So until we see a break at least below around 6,300 to test this next support at around 6,100, this uptrend pattern is still in place for the NASDAQ composite. So overall, guys, on the entire market right now, you know, like I've been saying over these past couple of videos, I expect a pullback, whether it's tomorrow, the next day, next week. I expect a pretty solid pullback in the overall markets because we're at critical resistances. We're nearing resistances. And we've had a bunch of green days in a row. And once this short-term news kind of fizzles off, um, you know, I think selling is going to occur again. And I really think sometimes, guys, I think to myself, um, you know, a lot of people out there think this as well. Does Trump just tweet in the morning before the market opens to push up the markets to really just play with investors' heads? I think he really does this sometimes, to be completely honest with you guys, because he tweeted this morning and, you know, he tweeted tweeted something like uh, trade talks with China are going very well and the markets ended up doing very well today. You know, does this correlate? I personally think it does a little bit, not to the fullest extent, but I think it does a little bit. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think on this topic. Does Trump have an effect on the market? What do you think? Um, you know, that may be, you know, a cool topic to talk about. So what did I trade today, guys? If you're a part of the Discord group chat, we were talking about JNUG this morning, and that's exactly what I ended up trading. And for those of you guys that don't know, JNUG is a gold-based ETF. It trades based on slash GC, and pretty much, guys, whenever slash GC is uh, going up in price, 
that's when JNUG is going up in price as well. So just to take a look at the JNUG chart very quickly before we do hop back into the slash GC chart, I'll show you guys exactly where I ended up trading this one. So we saw, you know, we saw that we pretty much sold off pretty heavily from yesterday's close in terms of uh, JNUG. And this is mostly because the gold futures actually sold off pretty decently as well. I think they sold off like 5 or 10 points from yesterday, and that obviously dragged down JNUG to open up the market. And that opened up a nice little profit margin from yesterday's resistance, right? That opened up nearly a 6% um, you know, margin of profit here on JNUG. And I actually ended up getting in JNUG right on this bounce here at $9.50. I took an initial position in JNUG. I actually did not add more money into it because it shot up very quickly, guys. I actually got out at around $9.80. Once we broke that resistance from yesterday's close, I figured that was a good exit point for JNUG and literally guys you know once I literally took my profits right I posted this I posted this in the chat as well we saw a pretty sizable pullback in JNUG right down to where I almost bought in right right at around nine dollars and uh, 58 cents so if you guys were able to trade JNUG today let me know this was a very very good play throughout the entire day and um you know, this trade got me around 3%, right? We'll be able to see this right here from about 950 up to around 980. It was nearly a 3% trade, right around a 2.9, 3% trade on the day for JNUG. So if we jump back to the GC chart so we can get some more context on what happened here, we can see this is where the dump occurred from around 1285 all the way to 1280 that opened up the margin for JNUG and then we obviously start to see some push here some higher highs some higher lows start to form that little uptrend from around 8 a.m. up to the market open then we obviously saw that massive spike and that's where I believe I took my profits right if we see the time correlation or was it the second no it definitely was not the second spike because I was at 1230 I was already done trading by then but yeah, it literally was right here at about 10.15. This is when we started to see that spike in gold. And that is what was pushing up JNUG, um, you know, very, very quickly from around 10 o'clock, 10.15 up to around 11 o'clock. So within 50 minutes, literally a 40 minutes rather, you know, JNUG was able to shoot up around four or five percent, and I was able to capture around three percent of JNUG. So let me know down below, guys, what are you trading? What did you guys trade today? Did you play some options? Did you trade inverse ETFs? Are you doing any swing trades during these uh you know green days that we are seeing? in the market. I would love to love to know. So let's take a look at some larger cap stocks to see, you know, what is going on with some of the bigger names. Let's take a look at Apple. You know, this one's right under that 50 SMA resistance still, like we were talking about in yesterday's video, and it's getting closer to that overbought territory. And I love looking at Apple all the time, guys, because it's one of the biggest companies and it's one of the stocks that I use to, you know, gauge the entire market, right? They're big in China and, you know, China sales have been going down. Apple's cut their revenue, and this is going to have a huge effect on the market, in my personal opinion. So Facebook today actually broke out of this 180 SMA. Very strong day, actually, for Facebook. Up nearly $5, up 3% on the day. Amazon had a pretty solid day as well today, up 1.6%, up $27. Netflix did decent as well, up $5, up 1.56%, but it's still trading at the top of this downwards trending channel here that we see, um, you know, indicated by this trend line. So this could be a rejection zone for Netflix, and it's also extremely overbought here on the 180 chart. Google is doing pretty well, and it has had a $7 day today, up 0.7%. Microsoft had around a $7, uh, 74 cent day, rather, up 0.7%. So some of these large cap stocks, guys, they're at resistance points. They're at the top of their downwards trending channels, and they're all at really critical points right now, in my personal opinion. So 
Let's take a look at some other stocks that have been doing very well or ETFs rather in this case. So we've been seeing a lot of movement in UWT and I'm very interested in actually trading this one heading off for the rest of this week. And this is a crude oil ETF, meaning that whenever crude oil is going up, that is when UWT is going up as well. So today, 6% day on UWT guys, up 66 cents. And this is mostly due to crude oil doing pretty well for the most part today. And why I like UWT a little bit more going forward is because crude oil is at a critical spot right here where if it breaks this resistance, guys, if it starts to push back and test the $50 range, the $55 range, you know, that is a reversal pattern for crude oil, meaning that UWT is going to become a very solid play over these next couple of weeks. But what I want to caution you guys on with crude oil is that it does seem to be a little bit overbought right now and it being at a resistance does tell me that this could pull back slightly, right? Do I think it's going to get back into this downwards trending pattern? Not quite yet based off the technicals, but I'm also seeing that we could pull back based on these technicals, guys, due to it being overbought and due to it being at this resistance, all Though we are slowly creeping above it we have to keep an eye on it though right guys just keep an eye on it tomorrow pre-market you know keep an eye on the futures the entire market in general large caps because if you're doing this you're keeping an eye on all these stocks guys it gives you an idea of where the market is pushing early on in the day and you'll be able to plan your trades accordingly which is super super important when it comes down to you know trading stocks and just planning and strategizing in general. So that is what I'm looking at, guys. You know, very critical point for crude oil and UWT. Another one that's critical right now, in my opinion, is uh, the natural gas-based ETFs. Um, we look here. We can see that natural gas is ex is actually consolidating right at that uh, support level from back in September, right around the two ninety eight to three dollar range. So what am I looking at here, guys? If we do break this fifty SMA resistance on the one eighty chart for natural gas, and the reports indicate that. They're bullish for natural gas and you gas. Well, I'm going to be trading you gas, right? It only makes sense, especially if the reports are coming back bullish and if we break this trend. So natural gas guys, you gas in general, they're at the top of my watch list, you know, heading on to the rest of this week and next week and really just this entire month, guys. I'm very interested to see if natural gas is going to start to push back up because we've seen a ridiculous sell-off, right? We've seen an, an insane sell-off. Honestly, guys, it's lost about nearly $2 in the past couple of weeks. So, you know, if it recovers, we'll be able to play you gas for a pretty major profit, guys, because, you know, if this is flying back up to the 350s, 340s, hypothetically, right now, you know, you gas is definitely going to double in price from where it is right now because remember guys it's a 3x leveraged ETF it moves three times as fast as the underlying asset which is natural gas in this case right so keep an eye on those very interesting and uh, just all the inverse ETFs and market ETFs that we play a lot on this channel let me take off this uh blue chip stock tab here that I do have this watch list um, I made a little watch list for blue chips because I'm looking to add money very soon guys within this next year um, you know in some more blue chip stocks to build up my dividend portfolio for the long term but that's a whole different topic for a whole nother video but these market ETFs I haven't talked about these in a couple days um these are very interesting plays as well over the next couple of days, right? If we do experience a sell-off in the market, you know, TVIX and SQQQ, which are two short uh, ETFs, meaning that they go up when the markets are selling off, they're going to be fantastic plays. And if the market continues to push up, we'll be able to play QQQ as well as UVXY, which are two ETFs. Actually, no, UVXY is a short ETF as well. 
QQQ and TQQQ are bull ETFs, meaning that you know when they're going up, the markets are going up, and obviously when they're going, when the markets are going down, you know these are going down. So that is my game plan. What I'm seeing today in terms of these uh, charts, guys, I expect a pullback in these next couple of days, whether it's tomorrow, the next day, the next day, next week. We don't know, but I do expect one coming very, very soon. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did feel free to drop a like leave a comment subscribe follow me on instagram and twitter and join the discord as well as the facebook i really appreciate all the love i've been getting guys all you guys out there watching this video i appreciate you so much you don't even understand so i'll catch you guys in the next video thanks again peace out